Morgan Parker is a man on a mission to ride his motorcycle from Hong Kong to Brisbane, Australia on a voyage that will see him travel through 10 countries and in the process raise awareness about 10 of the most important charities across the region. It's an adventure that will test his limits during a trip that will be exciting, dangerous, eye-opening and always breathtaking. Join him each week as he travels wheel to wheel. Following a month-long action-packed trek in Indonesia, we join Morgan after a frightening ferry crossing as he enters Timor-Leste. After weeks battling congestion in Sumatra and West Java, I was finally free to begin exploring Indonesia's wilderness. I just made it to the top of Mount Bromo here in East Java. Had one of the best rides of my life getting up here. Surrounded by mist and by nature. Absolutely awesome. This is what it's all about. Heading east, I hop from Java to Bali to Lombok to Sumbawa and finally Flores. With each ferry crossing seemingly taking me back in time as the sense of remoteness became a confronting reality. I made it to Rincha Island the home of the mysterious Komodo dragon. I'd been excited to see them since I was a kid. I got lucky and managed to see dozens of them during the visit. I'm here on Rincha Island off the coast of Flores, home to the, the greatest number of Komodo dragons that exist anywhere on the planet. After that, I was back in the saddle and further east I went. Things were getting tough, especially when I discovered ferries to Timor only leave once every two weeks. I rode for days across Flores searching for a port and a ferry. It turns out I had to ride all the way to Larantuka to find one. And then I really discovered what adventuring is all about. 15 hours of terrifying hell. I've decided to, to make this space uh, between these two trucks my home for the next 13 hours as I ride from Larantuka to Kupang. Um, the good news is, is I'm right beside my bike um, and I've got a space here that nobody walks through um, so it should, and at least I can stretch out here. The seas were pretty choppy that night, it was pitch dark, I'm down at the front. The, uh, the ramp that goes down at the front of the barge was up but the water was still coming over it and I was scared. I was on an Indonesian ferry with about 250 other people, I was the only foreigner on that ferry. Um, there didn't seem to be any lifeboats, no life jackets that were conspicuous. And I thought, if this thing goes down, we're finished. I was terrified. And when we finally saw the lights of Kupang in the early hour of the morning, like four o'clock in the morning, I just thought, so relieved that I'd made it. Excuse me. Yeah, diplomatic, 60 day. I'm here departing uh, Indonesia to go to Timor-Leste and as I expected, uh, when I came into Indonesia, the guys didn't have a proper visa stamp, so the, the, te the tourists usually get 30 days here in Indonesia. I've been here 31 days. So Morgan, you overstayed? No, I haven't. I haven't overstayed. This is 60 day visa. Oh, yes. APAC yes. Business Travel yes, Card, yes. yeah. No, no. APTC. Okay. Smooth as goodbye, Indonesia. Hello, Timor Leste. Immigration in Timor Leste is literally in a thin shed. Uh, in about a year, they're moving to some uh, new premises, but very, very primitive. I guess as a new country, having immigration is a relatively new thing for them. I was so excited to cross the border into Timor-Leste and see Alan with the Action for Change team off in the distance. Thank you. Obrigado. As I rode into Dili for the first time, I didn't know what to expect. The country's history is well reported, but I still struggled to appreciate what actually happened here. After hundreds of years' occupation, Firstly by the Portuguese, then Indonesia, Timor-Leste finally achieved its independence only 10 years ago. Since then, the United Nations has played a key role in assisting the new government construct its new nation. 
I always tell people that they should look at Timor as a, um, you know, a nation really um, that has existed for the last 10 years. I mean, you know, Timor is going to celebrate the 10th anniversary um, next year. And, um, you know, to see what has been achieved in those 10 years is remarkable. During the whole expedition, we've met so many different characters. Um, you know, I, I must have met a thousand people over the 125 days. Oh, I made it. One of the people I loved the most was Gino. Morgan, welcome to the island of paradise. Now, Hotel Dili is right in the center of Dili and has an incredible history, just like this country has an incredible history. Absolutely. And you've been here since the beginning of it all. Well, yeah, for sure, for sure. Right from when I was a, a younger fellow, you know. Um, our family's owned this hotel since uh, the 1st of February 1971. Over the last 10 years, we've had the UN police come through. We've had the other UN the military come through. And uh, of course, now we have wheel to wheel here. Like many conflict-ravaged Timorese, Gino and his family have faced many chaotic times when it comes to this hotel. After escaping to Australia in the 1970s, they returned again in the 90s, only to be told to leave again. Half a backpack, two changes of clothes, a bottle of water, funds that we could organise, passport, and, and out. And when you came back, what was left? There was only three tables, which you might see in the background there. Bar tables. With much of the country burnt to the ground, Hotel Dili became home to over 350 refugees. The community's spirit, shown in times of conflict, continues today with Gino providing an opportunity for impoverished students to work at the hotel. We have them from housekeeping to laundry to in the office to the cooks. All the cooks in our hotel now are ex-students or current students. Uh, same with the bar. We've had over 90 students come through here since 2003. We uh, assist wherever we can with these young people because they will be our future ministers. They will be our future ministers of tourism, um, of uh, trade, of uh, even prime ministers. It's thrilling to be in the first new sovereign state of the 21st century, in a country that's a little over 5,000 square miles with a population of just over one million people you can feel the enthusiasm for the future of this nation. I've never been anywhere where people are so vested in change for their country. History has brought these people together. Now it's time for them to create opportunities and a new destiny. When Wheel to Wheel returns, we're going to meet Action for Change Foundation, which is doing just that for a dislocated generation of Timorese. New day in Dili and I'm off to meet Action for Change Foundation, our selected grassroots charitable organisation for Timor-Leste. ACF cleverly uses sport to engage the youth whose education was abandoned due to the military conflict here. They then provide critical vocational skills to improve the employment prospects and lead them to a better life. Great to be here. <laughs> Ooh, awesome ride. Hi everybody. Wow, so many. Oh, thank you. We've met with many business owners. The one thing that these business owners all say to me is that we're looking for local staff who have skills, language, to help us grow our companies and through strong companies and strong industries you'll develop a strong nation. As my words were being translated I could see that they were keen to listen. To say that these students have passion is an understatement. Just five years ago the country was in the middle of a civil war between the Timor military and the national police and it was the youths of Timor-Leste who were caught in the crossfire. Many got involved in gangs and even took to fighting in the streets. One brave man named Jose decided that there had to be a better way, a brighter future. In 2007, I start with Action for Change Foundation. I start with the uh, different activities that can uh, improve the, someone's life, especially for the young people. We teach English, computer, office administration skills, uh, leadership, and uh, proposal writing. 
and basic accounting uh, to, to manage the finance. And then uh, we send the young people to practice on-the-job training in different institutions. We have a great deal of respect for the founder of ACF. No one understands the Timorese better than the Timorese. So, uh, you know, I think that that is we strive for. The fact that the Timorese establishes the NGO, as I said, is, is, is really just uh, admirable and, and the way it should be. It's forward thinking as today's Timorese youths will be the leaders of tomorrow. Provided the donations continue, more and more youths can benefit from ACF's efforts to help them. For me and for all the people in here, that ACF is a good uh, course to attend it. There's to uh, the, uh, the young people in this team or to get a good job. Yeah. Right now I'm as, uh, uh, as a university student for English, English university students. I think that uh, five years coming I will be a teacher. I have changed in my life that I have changed for the, because now I have improved my English, management, fairness and other languages and other things. Make us feel very happy because extra change is very helpful for our young people in Delhi and in Timor. The Action for Change youth um, all expressed an, a very strong and very articulate message about the future. Whether ACF teaches students English, computer skills or even sports to establish self-esteem, the foundation is definitely making a difference and they hope to carry on well into the future. My uh, principle is to uh, delivering, implementing and changing someone's life. So I deliver what I am having at the moment with the skills, experience uh, that I learn from different uh, people, different countries and uh, uh, different organizations. We are working hard, challenging ourselves to improve someone's life. I guess what was most striking about ACF is the, the principal, uh, Jose de Jesus, a very young Timorese man with a good education who could have made any other choice in life but instead of taking the money which would have been the typical path of least resistance for someone at his point in life, he decided to establish Action for Change Foundation. He now has 500 kids in this program and his operating budget is tiny. What he's been able to do with such a small amount of money, get a vast number of children in there who would have been unproductive for the economy, is staggering to me. As I reflected on the amazing work of Action for Change, I realised we'd only scratched the surface of this beautiful country. When Wheel to Wheel returns, we'll experience some of Timor-Leste's hidden treasures, both at land and sea. Well, just about there. We're just waiting on Morgan. Where's the man? The question everybody's asking is, where is Morgan? Even before setting out from Hong Kong months earlier, Wheel to Wheel was already enjoying lots of support in Timor-Leste. The Ministry of Tourism had been planning activities around my visit to celebrate the tourism appeal of the country and draw attention to the work of ACF. The highlight was a bike rally where dozens of local motorcycle enthusiasts joined me on an all-day adventure along the coast and through the countryside. It was clear to me that Timor has plenty to offer when it comes to adventure riding. I think it's uh, one of the greatest motorcycle destinations in the world, really. It's uh, because it's, it's untouched. You go out in the districts, uh, there's huge mountain ranges, beautiful pieces of coast, a little, a little island uh, off, off the eastern tip, uh, but you're mostly going through agricultural villages and uh, people are uh, incredibly friendly. You spend all day waving to people. I was even lucky enough to have former Miss Australia Caroline Pemberton jump on board with me for the rally. Wheel to wheel. When I first heard about it, all I heard were whispers of this motorbike rally that was coming through Timor and it might coincide with when we were here filming. And then when I found out a little bit more about it, that he's going through, you know, 10 countries, supporting 10 charities, 100 days, I thought that was pretty cool. As a tourism ambassador here, she was quick to share her enthusiasm for Timor-Leste. 
I think people need to get here now just to really see Timor before it gets commercialised or lots of tourists come. It's a very undiscovered destination. Um, it's full of adventure. The bike rally really proved why Dave and Caroline are so passionate about this new nation. It sure does provide some sensational sights. We ended up in the seaside town of Bacau, where students at the Tourism Industry Development College treated us to a memorable cultural experience. <laughs> the cooking and hospitality school, together with the Knossen nuns, put on a massive feast, the perfect ending to our big day out. We're heading out to K41 off the north shore of Timor-Leste. I've heard so much about the diving here. Supposedly it's one of the best places in the world. Wayne from Free Flow Diving is going to show us what it's all about. Can't wait. Well, when you go out, you're going to feel as though you're in an aquarium. You're going to see hard and soft corals, sponges, crinoids, these very colourful sea stars, angelfish, butterflyfish, sweet lips, emperors. You're going to see everything here. In between here on the north coast and the island over there, the depth of the water gets down to three kilometers, believe it or not. There's a huge shelf about 10 meters away and then it just plummets down into the deep dark ocean. I've just poked my head down. Hundreds of fish, it's unbelievable. It was hard to imagine all this could exist so close to the shore. Wheel to Wheel's visit to Timor-Leste was capped off by an amazing afternoon spent with its president and Nobel Peace Prize winner, Mr. Jose Ramos Horta. He is a remarkable man and historic leader who was so welcoming and keen to better understand my expedition. So which country have you been to? Uh, I started in Hong Kong and then travelled into southern China. But it all seemed very daunting for him. Frankly, I don't think I would do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, my mother said the same thing. Well, if the prospect of my expedition seemed daunting, then obviously pulling a nation out of turmoil, winning the hearts of his people and winning a Nobel Peace Prize seems like all in a day's work for this immensely modest man. The country is very peaceful, relaxed. You can see in the eyes, face of people, the children and the women, in an incredible contrast to uh, four or five years ago. Here in my own house, I had, uh, in 2006, I had uh, hundreds of uh, displaced persons sleeping all over the place. Inside here? Yes, when uh, I saw people start fleeing because of the growing virus, I opened the gates and I said, anyone wishing to come can come. I had no security whatsoever, but people uh, felt safe here. I'm very impressed by the leadership in, in the country who I feel are so in touch with their people and so accessible to the masses, which, you know, you don't see uh, reflected that well in many other nations. So I think, uh, you know, the, the sense and, and getting sort of the, the feel and the pulse is very much there between the people and the leadership. So for me, to see a young nation uh, embody all these principles of democracy, human rights, and the kinds of things that the UN always continues to advocate for is, is, is uh, very encouraging. At one point, up to 700 people. The wow. only place no one was occupying was my bed. President Horta certainly shows a humanitarian character, which in times of crisis is stronger than ever. Can I bring them uh, peace, tranquility, because what's most in the Timor is mine, psyche is security. It's an honor. It's not every day that uh, I have to be such a prominent person. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's our honor, believe me. We've had a couple of incredible days here in Timor-Leste, and as the sun sets on Wheel to Wheel's time here, I can only reflect on the fabulous work that Action for Change Foundation is doing to prepare Timor-Leste's youth 
to fill all of those jobs that are going to be coming along as economic development takes hold here. We also had the unique honour of meeting Timor-Leste's president, Mr Ramos Horta. What an incredible honour to meet Nobel Peace Prize winner and the father of this new nation. With leadership like this, I'm confident this country has a huge future. So now it was time to ship my bike to Australia. But little did I know that not only would there be an eight day delay, but also I was about to get a major shafting on price. How much is it? It's around 1,600. Oh, So, that's it. It cannot be 1,600. Will Morgan overcome his delays? Will he be able to start the final leg of wheel to wheel in Australia? The tension is mounting. I'm not giving you a dollar, yeah. nothing, until I get my bike in Darwin. As are tempers too. What's up, yeah. I've been completely f by the eight day, eight day delay. I'm writing for charity. Okay. This ship schedule has completely And don't talk to me because I'm Now my bike is going to have to sit around here. I don't know what we're going to do. This is an absolute disaster. Find out in the next episode of Wheel to Wheel. For more information, please visit wheel2wheel.tv.